Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. I am Apostle Carmen Haywood, um, and I am the proud pastor of PIPW Ministry here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And it's a night of prophetic surge empowerment. All right. So tonight you're going to be empowered. Amen. And we bless God. Hallelujah for what he's getting ready to do on tonight. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you for joining us. Amen. We're going to log on to uh, Instagram. And we're also going to log on to Facebook Live tonight. We are so excited. I'm excited. Amen. And hopefully you are excited too uh, for a night of prophetic surge empowerment. Once again, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook Live. We are finally on. <laughs> Glory to God. So I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome once again to each and every one of you, to every member, every covenant partner of PIPW Ministry. We welcome you in Jesus' name. Yes, in Jesus' name. Listen, tonight is going to be an awesome night. I want to just say tonight, you know, that um, God is amazing. God is so amazing because, you know, what he gave me to minister to on tonight, people of God, um, when he first gave it to me, I was like, I said, well, Lord, you know, your people should already know this, right? And he began to speak to me and he said, they know this but they don't have the strength and the ability to speak it. God bless you, Minister CC. And so I said, okay, God. So the Lord spoke to me in prayer today and he said, prophesy over my people, new beginnings. That's exactly what he told me. Hallelujah. And I began to wrestle with it. And I said, Lord, I said, well, your people should already know, you know, to speak those things that be not as though they were. Or better yet, your people should know how to pray. You know, they should know to, to ask you for new beginnings. Amen. And God began to deal with me. God bless you, Diane. The Lord began to deal with me. And he, this is what he said. He said, many of my people are being fought so hard. And I said, well, Lord, they should know how to fight. I'm telling you all the conversation I had with God. And this is how we got to tonight. That's right, Bridget. New beginnings. And so God began to speak to me. And he said, daughter... I want you to prophesy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, there's revival in your mouth. Glory to God. That's exactly what he told me. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook Live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So tonight, glory to God. For those of you that hear the word of the Lord and you receive the word of the Lord, you shall begin to walk into new beginnings. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, people of God. Glory to God. This is a season of new beginnings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And one thing I know about God, God bless you, Angela. One thing I know about the Lord is that he requires us to be obedient to him. And when we are obedient unto God, hallelujah, everything that we need, it will begin to line up. It will begin to line up. I'm telling you, it, it will begin to line up. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Latoya on Instagram. Listen, everything that you need from God, it requires obedience. And so because God has allowed many doors to close in the last season, come on, God bless you, uh, Bridget, amen, God bless you. Listen, because God has allowed many doors to close, and just because doors have closed, doesn't mean that it's over. Listen, Sometimes God allows doors to close so that he can open up new ones. <laughs> Come on, somebody. But you have to be willing, and I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but hear this. You have to be willing to let God close that door. Even if it's a door of familiarity. Come on. Even, God bless your sister Debbie for sharing tonight. Thank you so much, woman of God. Listen. Even if, listen. You, 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 you might be so comfortable and we've all been there. I've been there too. Okay. You can be comfortable with a situation, but if it's toxic, why be comfortable with it? If it's not prosperous, if it's not prospering you, your family, your children, why stay in a situation where God is not? Amen. God bless your daughter, Yolanda Frazier. I'm so glad you was able to join tonight. Listen, listen, I'm telling you. This word is for many of you tonight. God bless you, daughter Chanel. Hallelujah. And I just want to say this tonight. You know, as God was speaking to me, Minister Cece, I began to say, I said, Lord, well, your people should know. 
And he said, daughter, he said, my people are being fought by the enemy because they have opened doors to Satan. I'm telling you what he told me. He said, many of my children have opened doors. And I was like, Lord, I, you know, I, I went back and forth and I was like, God, I was like, well, they should know to close the door. I'm going to be honest. I was like, Lord, they should know to close the door. They should know that when the devil is in, he don't have no place. You know, because everybody's so quick to say, oh, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Get out. You can get out. You can get out. But then turn around and open the door to the enemy again. Come on. And so, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray in a minute. But I love the way that God is moving in this hour. I love the way that God is moving in this season concerning his people. Because you know what? He's moving in a different way. Hallelujah. And sometimes we want God to do things the way that we wanted to do it. Or better yet. Or better yet. Um, Elder Shahid. Um, I'm sorry, Sharad. Or better yet. What happens is we are familiar with the way that God did it before. And we, you know... <laughs> Let me just pause for a minute. <laughs> Katrina says, come on, listen, listen, hallelujah. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. But guess what? What he's about to birth out in your life is different now. It is different. So because it's different, and, and let me just say this. Thank you, Ami Vandis Arlene. I'm sorry, I done pinned the wrong comment. Listen, let me, let me, let me just do this real quick. All right, to God be the glory. I think I did it. Okay, God bless you, Vandis Arlene, and thank you. Because God is doing something different, God bless you, Sister Mitzi. Listen, because he's moving in a different way, you, you, you have to move with God the way that he's moving. If you're used to one, two, and three, A, B, and C, and we know it can be so simple, right? And we know God is a simple God. But one thing, ah, oh, yabashe, hallelujah. One thing I know about God, when he's shifting you, hallelujah, you have to be willing to shift with him, which means you might have to do something that you've never done before. Come on. You, you got to do something that you've never, ever, <laughs> that you've never, ever done before. Ask me how I know. Ha, ah, glory to God. And that means stepping out on faith. Woo. Come on here. That means stepping out on faith. Hallelujah. I have a beautiful picture right here. Amen. In my dining room. And let me just say this. It's a beautiful picture. And I've had it. I had it in Philadelphia and I brought it here with me. And I was just looking at it, Sister Mitzi. And in the picture, there's a woman and she's, she's about to step out of the, on the cliff. Right? And she's about to step out. But she's blindfolded. She can't see anything. Hallelujah. She, she can't see anything. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And some of the, you know, the picture that I have is called stepping out on faith. It's right here. And, and so some of the, sometimes there's a picture with a man on one side and there's a woman on the other side, right? God bless you, uh, woman of God. <laughs> Amen. Mary Ann, God bless you. Amen. I look forward to seeing you in Baltimore. Amen. For our business um, meeting. Yes. Listen. So, you know, um, stepping out on faith, the stepping out on faith picture is the man on one side and a woman on, on the other side. Well, the picture I have is just a woman. It's just a woman. And I remember I was at an art show and that's how I got it, right? A woman of God had invited me, you know, to an art show and I saw it and immediately the Holy Spirit said, get the picture. He said, purchase it. Hallelujah. And I, I really didn't have no idea of why God said to purchase it. But you're talking about almost 10 years later. Almost 11 years, matter of fact. You're talking about almost 11 years later, that picture still speaks volumes to me. Why? Because there are different times that you got to step out on faith. Who am I talking to? There are times that you got to step out on faith. And one thing I know about God, hallelujah, he's not going to force himself on you. Listen, he's a gentleman. So when you're ready, hallelujah, he will make everything straight in your life. Come on. When you're ready, he'll make the crooked path straight. Now, if you ain't ready, he'll let the, the path stay crooked. I'm talking to somebody tonight. Listen, so when God, he knows when your heart is right. He knows when your motive is right. He knows when your mind is clear. Come on. This is why he said he'll make a way of escape for you. Who am I talking to? See, God, oh, uh, see, 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 this word is not for everybody. This word is only for those that are ready for a new start. 
a new beginning. Come on. I want to say a new life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Some of you tonight, you're going to rededicate your heart back to God because the truth of the matter is you might have picked up some stuff along the way that has caused your faith. Hallelujah. To dwindle just a little bit. Come on, somebody. Some of you, listen, you might be saved, but you on the wrong path. We just going to tell the truth and shame the devil tonight. If I didn't greet you, I'm so sorry. I see y'all names flying so fast. I apologize if I didn't greet you personally, but I just greet everybody in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Is that all right? Ha, ah, hallelujah. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there comes a time, amen, when God is shifting and he's moving. That's why eight is the number of new beginnings. When God is shifting and God is moving, you have to be willing to say, okay, God, I'm going to shift and I'm going to move with you. I'm going to move with you, God, even when I don't understand, because I trust you. Hallelujah. I trust you, God. Hallelujah. And I know that you are the one, hallelujah, that has an awesome plan for my life. So you got to start walking in Jeremiah 29 and 11. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. Hallelujah. But you have to be willing to walk in Jeremiah 29 and 11. The Bible says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of evil. Come on, somebody, to give you hope and an expected end, right? Come on. So, so uh, hallelujah. So God's plan for your life is good. So if you in a place right now when it ain't good, baby, let, 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 me, let me be nice. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Man of God, woman of God, you in the wrong place. <laughs> Listen, that doesn't mean, hallelujah, that you're not going to go through trouble. That doesn't mean that you're not going to go through persecution. That doesn't mean, hallelujah, that you might not stay in a situation just a little too long. But don't overstay when God is telling you to exit. Don't overstay your time. Woo. When God is telling you your time is up. Come on here. I share my testimony of when I had to leave my former church. I share it because I'm not telling nobody to leave their church, but I share it because sometimes your heart can be in something that God is no longer in. Woo! Listen, <laughs> sometimes, hallelujah, it could be a good situation. It can be something so good because guess what? I learned true holiness in my, in my former church. Right, Pastor Kim? I learned how to live holy. Hey, hallelujah. I learned how to call on the name of Jesus. Come on. I learned how to get filled with the spirit and stay filled. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. A lot of churches don't, don't, don't preach that no more. Come on, they, they don't, ah, they tell you that the Holy Ghost make you jump and shout. No, the Holy Ghost make you love your enemies. Come on, somebody. The Holy Ghost, it don't make you just jump and shout because sometimes you ain't got nothing to jump and shout about. Sometimes you're sitting there listening because the Holy Spirit, ah, because the Holy Spirit is really in you now. And you like, I learned to shut up. You got to shut up ministry. <laughs> Come on here. So sometimes, hallelujah, you ain't jumping and you ain't shouting. The truth of the matter is sometimes when the Holy Spirit is dealing with you, you're sitting there and you're digesting it. Hallelujah. You're taking it in because you're saying, wait a minute, there must be more than this. Hallelujah. It got to be more, hallelujah, to this saved life than this. So I learned true holiness in my former church. Amen. My, 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 my former pastor, hallelujah, was a holy woman of God. Listen, so I had a great example in front of me. Hallelujah. And, and I just want to say, I'm sorry. I have to apologize for those of you that don't have a great example before you. I just want to apologize on behalf of your pastor, your bishop, your leader. And I'm apologizing. Hallelujah. Because listen, if they're not ministering to where you are right now, come on, sister Latanya, and where God wants to take you, you in the wrong place, baby. You in the wrong place. You in the wrong place. And sometimes leaders don't want to let you go. But I tell my church all the time, you feel led to go? The door is right there. We're going to bless you on the way out. <laughs> because I tell my members and covenant partners, don't leave until God says so. D don't you leave a place till God says so. Because you just might leave out of the wrong timing. 
But there comes a time, who am I talking to, when it's time for you, hey, how y'all about shape, to pack your stuff and say, you know what, it's time for me to move on. Come on. When you have outgrown a place, who am I talking to? Now, I ain't telling nobody to leave. Don't y'all go back and say, Prophetess Carmen told me to leave my church. I didn't say that. If it's not confirmation for you, don't you go nowhere. <laughs> okay? I'm, I would never tell nobody to leave their church. I wouldn't be God's prophet if I did. Amen. But there comes a time, hallelujah, where when you're desiring more, and even when you are prophetic, you have to know that God wants to birth something new in you. Glory to God. He wants, he wants to birth something new in you. Hallelujah. And out of you. Glory to God. But you must surround yourself with prophetic people. You must have a prophetic leader. And so I thank God for my former pastor because she was a bona fide prophet. Amen. Hallelujah. And I learned so much from her. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When to be quiet. When to open my mouth. Come on, hallelujah. When to pray, amen, and cast out devils and when to shut up and not cast out nothing. Come on, hallelujah. But because just because a person is demon possessed or they have demons inside of them, that doesn't mean that's your opportunity. Who am I talking to for you to cast them devils out? So I learned very well, okay? I had an awesome teacher. Oh, y'all not ready. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, because most prophets are also teachers. Which means you have to learn how to sit and humble yourself. Mm, this is going to be real good tonight. Somebody shout, this is my new beginning because I'm going to learn how to shut up. And I'm going to learn how to sit. And I'm going to learn how to humble myself now. Ha! Ah, glory to God. See, see, God is giving you another chance even in this new beginning. Come on. A lot of times when we hear new beginning, Sister Miranda, we get excited and we believe it's a new house. We believe it's a new car. We believe it's some more money. We believe that if we just went through a divorce, God going to give us a new spouse. Sometimes it's not that. Sometimes your new beginning is a place of being humble. Come on. Sometimes. Ah, hallelujah. Sometimes in your new beginning, God is putting a teacher in your life to teach you something that you just didn't know. That you just didn't know. And even when you thought you knew, you realize now I still don't know anything. Come on, hit those hearts for Jesus if that's you tonight. Come on, hit those hearts for the Lord if that's you tonight. I really didn't know what I thought I did. So let me stop posting on Facebook. Matter of fact, let me let me just shut up for a minute because I, I'm, digging a deeper, I'm digging a deeper ditch for myself because I just really didn't know. Come on. I really didn't know that ministry, hallelujah, is going to cost me something. Come on. Let's, let's tell the truth and shame the devil. I, I didn't know. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so I had the privilege of having two of my ministers with me the other day. And we had to go pick up some items for somebody. And while we were in the store, woman of God, Marion, while we were in the store, Sister Latanya, I, I told the ministers, I turned back and I looked at them. I said, this is ministry. I said, this right here is ministry. Being able to go to a store to buy something for somebody that they cannot buy for themselves. Come on. Hallelujah. And not wanting a dime back. Come on. Standing in long lines. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Willing to give up your time, your money. Oh, y'all not going to talk. Come on, somebody. So that's ministry. When you're able to do something for somebody else. Come on, unselfishly, hallelujah. And you're giving God the glory while you are doing it. So I had the opportunity to, you know, teach my ministers what real ministry is. Ministry is not sitting behind a pulpit with a microphone in your hand. That's not ministry. If God graces you to get to that place, so be it. But you just better know, you, you better know what you're talking about too. Because if you mishandle, speak Holy Ghost. If you mishandle God's holy word, you in trouble. You in trouble. If you making up messages <laughs> to, 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 to get back at somebody, or if you, if you making up words because you got it out for somebody. <laughs> Come on, we, we you, this is our sword against the enemy, not against each other. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, Shatanda Baha'i. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Hallelujah. Pastor Kim laughing, but it ain't nothing funny, right, Pastor Kim? Come on. It's the truth. Come on, somebody. John 1 and 1. 
In the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word was with God. Come on. Hallelujah. So Jesus is the word. Ha. Huh? So when you handle this written word, let me tell you something. You're handling God. <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. That's why the devil backs down to the word because when you speak the word, hallelujah, the enemy can't do nothing but bow down and say, wait a minute. That's Jesus right there. Hold on. Wait a minute. He said, okay, I got to be quiet. Because they're speaking the word. Ha! Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, and when we're speaking the word in authority, mm, the devil don't like that. See, the enemy does not like, ah, come on, teach Holy Ghost tonight. The enemy does not like when you use the word against him. Now, he don't care about our opinions. You know, he don't care nothing about your opinion. I think, I think, I think. I'm mad about this. I'm mad about that. Yada, 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 yada. The devil don't care. He's sitting right there watching you, laughing at you. But the moment, hey, hi, Yabashe, you speak the word of God. Let me tell you something. He got to shut up. He got to bow down. Because the word is Jesus Christ himself. Amen. So let's stop mishandling the word. And let's use the word properly. But if you don't know how to use the word properly, sit somewhere and be taught. Come on. And even as prophets, hallelujah, we prophesied the word of the Lord. We prophesied the word of God. Hallelujah. So if you know a prophet that's constantly telling you you're going to be a millionaire, they ain't telling you to be faithful, but they telling you you're going to be rich. Come on here. They telling you you're going to get a house, but you can't even keep your apartment. The devil is a liar. I said it. And they're a false prophet. Come on. I said it. And I don't take it back. Come on. You got people out here that are saying what thus saith the Lord. And it's really not God. Come on. Prophecy is supposed to. Oh, Holy Ghost got me teaching tonight. It's all right. It's all right. Because somebody needs this. Prophecy draws you back to God. Hello. Hello. It draws you back to God. And if you're not in the. Yes, Lord, I hear you. If you're not in the right place with him. When you receive a prophecy, it's for you to get back on your knees, hallelujah, and get back into a position, hallelujah, to obedience to God so that he can then perform his word that he spoke over your life. The prophet is just a vessel. Come on, the prophet, can I teach tonight? The prophet is just a vessel. So don't get mad at the prophet. Don't become jealous of the prophet. You know how many people leave a prophetic ministry because they just don't understand what God is doing? You know how many people disconnect from true prophets because they really don't understand the move of God and how God uses his prophets? Because the truth of the matter is, if we were to go back to prophets of the doom and gloom days, the Old Testament, we'd be messed up. Come on here. We, be, we would be, the body of Christ would be messed up. Come on, somebody. And there are times that God sent me in places I had to minister. And I'm like, they really don't want to hear what I got to say. Because God is not pleased with this house. Come on. His spirit departed a long time ago. And God will say, tell them. And I got to tell them. And they like, Apostle, I loved you, but you ain't coming back. I say, that's all right. I don't have to come back. Because I did what God told me to do. And that's up to you to get right. <laughs> Because you have to stand before God. Hey, in judgment. And you know what he told me years ago? I can share this prophetic secret with y'all. On the day of judgment, so many people are going to stand before God. And you know what they're going to say? Daughter Chanel. They're going to say, I didn't know. They're going to try to make an excuse on the day of judgment. And you know what God is going to say to many people? I sent my prophet to tell you the truth and you didn't listen. I sent my vessel, hallelujah, to tell you the truth and you didn't listen. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I, I, I sent my prophet and you didn't honor him. You didn't honor her. But what you did in turn was you talked about him. Because you didn't understand. Come on. This is why God said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. God meant exactly what he said. Come on here. That means touch with your hand or touch with your mouth. Don't do it. If you don't like a prophet, then depart and don't ever come back. 
But but don't say ah yeah by shay. I hear you guys because it's on here. Uh huh. Uh huh. Many people that yeah, yes Lord I hear you. I gotta say it. They hate the prophet. They like the prophet at first. I'm, I'm gonna give it to you the way God is, is speaking it to me. They like the prophet at first, but then when the prophet comes with a word of rebuke, a word of judgment, a word of correction, they don't like the prophet no more. Who is he to tell me that? Who is she to say that to me? When really is God speaking to you? And then you turn around and you hate the prophet. But some way, somehow, you always find your way back. Ha! Ah, you know why you find your way back? Because it was your flesh. God ain't tell you to depart from the prophet. It was your flesh. Somebody got their answer tonight. Come on here. It, it was your ah, you by shape. It was your flesh. <laughs> See, mm, even like tonight, God is saying new beginnings. He told me to prophesy new beginnings and restoration. And that's what I'm getting ready to do. Hallelujah. I have to do it because there are many of you that are fighting and wrestling with the enemy. God showed me in the realm of the spirit. So I'm going to be obedient to God and do what he told me to do. But the truth of the matter is so many people need to repent also. Come on, because God, if you are in a place where God is displeased with you, I don't care what prophet tells you anything. It doesn't matter. You could be in the midst like this of, of 35 people. You could be in the midst, hallelujah, and you got an alt against your brother. You got unforgiveness in your heart. You a backbiter and you have not repented. You got to repent first. You have to repent and come clean with God because guess what? New beginners won't be your portion. We have to understand that prophetic words, hallelujah, hmm, prophetic declarations can only, can only be manifested in someone's life who is obedient to God. We got to understand that. And we get so excited. Come on. We get so excited. You know, when, when we hear a good word, like new beginnings. But see, some of you, God is going to give you a new heart. Because your heart is cold. You know, in the book of Ezekiel, it says, listen, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. So, ah, yes, Lord, I hear you. Seven of you. Lord says seven of you need a new heart. See, when your heart becomes black and becomes cold, we can see it. I can see it. A prophet can see it right on your face. We can see it when you're bitter, when you're angry, when you're resentful. <laughs> Come on. When you're mad at the world and you're mad at God. Selah. We're going to pause right there for a minute because God said there's seven of you that are in that place right now. One thing you can't do is rush God. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Some of you trying to rush God. You, you can't rush him. He moves in the right timing. Right, Sister Joy? Come on. He, he moves, hallelujah, in the right timing. And that timing is not always our time. He just wants us to be prepared for when he's going to move. Come on. Hallelujah. He, he wants our heart to be right. Come on, Jennifer. He, he wants your heart to be right, my Lord. So if God made you a promise, Hallelujah. He, he spoke over your life years ago. Hallelujah. Your new beginning tonight may be a, a new heart. You know, it, 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 that's right. Created me a clean heart. Your, your, your new beginning tonight, Shay, may just be for God to give you a new mindset. Ooh, I feel God moving right here. Listen, listen, new beginnings ain't always money, houses, cars, and babies, and weddings, and all of that stuff. Come on. Hallelujah. We have to die ah, by shape. We got to come out of that. That's a form of godliness, but denying his power because the truth of the matter is hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you know that the power of God is real and we serve a God that can heal, deliver and set free. He wants to heal you before he gives you the new house, because guess what? If he gives you a new house and you're still bitter and you got unforgiveness, that house, you might as well stay where you was at. Come on. <laughs> you, you might as well just come on, Sister Kashina, right? You, you might as well just stay where you was at. Ain't nothing changed. <laughs> Only thing changed is now you got a different key to a different door. And now you're looking at a new place. And you just like, okay. But nothing. Ah, Shakay. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Nothing changed. 
So before he moves you, he wants to change you. Before he relocates you, he wants to change your heart. Come on. Because the word has been spoken on yesterday. Hallelujah. That God, ah, yes, Lord. He's getting ready to move many people because he has need of you in different regions. Come on. He might have need of you. You might not leave your state, but you may leave that city and you may go to another city. Because God has need of you. We're in the last days. Amen. That's how I got here to Raleigh, North Carolina. Come on, somebody. I didn't ask for this. Hallelujah. But seven years ago, I had a dream. Hallelujah. I had, and, and in the dream, I saw the sign, Welcome to Raleigh. Had no idea. Never seen it before. Amen. Hallelujah. Never seen it before. Um, a woman of God, Mary, and God bless you, uh, Minister Adam. Listen, never saw, listen, never seen the sign. But I had many prophetic dreams. So I had, to, I had a dream of the sign, welcome to Raleigh. And when you're riding from Nightdale, going to Raleigh, North Carolina, you coming from Nightdale into Raleigh, that's where the sign is. And I pass that sign almost every day. Come on. And that's an indication that I'm in the right place. Ah, hallelujah. I remember seeing open fields, Sister Maisha. I want to help somebody right here. Hallelujah. I just want to testify real quick. I remember seeing open fields and land. And I'm like, where's this place? I'm talking about dreams, prophetic dreams five years ago, three years ago. Come on here. Before I even got here. Ah, hallelujah. Having prophetic dreams. And then when I would ride past this, Sister Kashina, I would say, wait a minute. I saw that place. I saw that open field. I saw the name of that store. I saw the name of that bank. Come on. And back home in Philadelphia, it ain't no trust banks. And ain't no, it's, it's about three banks out here that, that ain't even, you know, from my hometown. So, you know, God showed me these places. And it's an indication that I'm in the right place. Come on. I, I made a post the other day about being in the will of God. Let's just touch that real quick before we dive into the word. I made a post about being in the will of God. When you are in the will of God, let me just help a few of you. See, I can only prophesy new beginnings because God gave it to me. Can I just help y'all out? I can only prophesy restoration because God restored me. Listen, listen, let, let me just help you out. Let me, let me make a sidebar right here. Stop listening to these people that don't have a... a they ain't even got a house. They living in hotels, prophesying on Facebook. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. I got to expose the devil. I have to expose the enemy. If they ain't got a house, how they going to tell you guys getting ready to give you a... They ain't got no money in the bank, but God is about to... The Bible says we prophesy according to the faith that God has given us, the measure of faith that God has given us. So God ain't do it for you, but he about to do it for me. Huh? Wait a minute. So, something ain't right with this equation. <laughs> Come on here. Because the prophet, yes, Lord, I hear you. The prophet should have the ability to tap in to the realm of the spirit by faith to receive, hallelujah, all that it is that God has for them. Before they speak over your life. Come on. And some of y'all listening to some of these prophets. They going from hotel to hotel to hotel with your offering. So the next time they tell you, oh, I see a house and God going to give you a house. Say, brother, man, do you got a house? <laughs> Woman of God, do you have a house? See, y'all not bold like me, but I'm bold. And when somebody prophesied to me, I be quiet. I ain't speaking in tongues. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. My mouth, I'm listening. Tequila says, wow. It probably just happened to her. I'm listening to what the prophet is saying. I ain't all caught up, ready to fall out and all of that. <laughs> No, I want to hear what you're saying. Right, Apostle Rita? Come on, we listen. Hello? 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 
Hello, hello to those of you in the back. Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> I teach my members, be quiet. Listen to what the prophet is saying. Come on, it might be a new word. It might, ah, yabashe. It might not be a word of confirmation. It might be a word of knowledge. Come on, it might be something that God is getting ready to release in your life that, that you've never even heard before. But if you you talking over the prophet, you can't hear what that saith the Lord. God bless you, woman of God, Shamika. <laughs> Listen, hallelujah. Stay with us as long as you can. Listen. Listen. Hallelujah. New beginnings are coming. Which means now it's time for many of you to possess the land. I hear God say it. Some of you is time for new ministry. I hear the Lord say it. Some of, yes, Lord, I hear you. Some of you is time for a new life, a new start in life. Come on, Rashida. It's time for a new beginning. Hallelujah. You might have messed up, but it's okay. Glory to God. I'm telling you, people of God, it's okay. Because God said, tell my people, I'm getting ready to birth out new beginnings for them. And I say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. So I had to submit to God even concerning this word. Because I told you all in the beginning, I'm like, Lord, why they just can't speak over their life? And he began to show me the attacks and the distraction. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And how the enemy is so crafty. This is why this is why your ear has to be inclined to the voice of God. And if you can't hear God right now, you need a prophet in your life. Hear me and hear me well, people of God. If you ain't hearing God, stop faking it. Stop acting like you're hearing him. When it's time for you to study the word and he ain't giving you no revelation, say it. I ain't getting no revelation. I had a woman of God message me the other day. She said, Apostle, can you teach me? Because every time I read the word, I'm not getting anything. I said, woman of God, we're going to have Bible study on Zoom. I'm going to let you know when we start having Bible study on Zoom. But God didn't release me for that yet. But I told her, I said, I'm going I'm to I'm help you. Don't worry about it. I'm going to help you. She said there was a time. Speak, Holy Ghost. She said there was a time when she would pray. And she knew she reached heaven. There was a time that she would read her word and God gave her revelation. But she said, Apostle, I'm not there anymore. I I'm not there anymore. She said, I read the word and I, I just don't get no revelation. I just, it's just words on the paper. Ah, Jesus, have mercy. Jesus have mercy. Jesus have mercy. So some things have happened in her life. But see, it took her being real. I feel the Holy Ghost. It, it took her being real with God. It took her being real to even reach out. Ah, to say, please help me. We have, we have become so... I don't need no help. I don't need a pastor. I don't need a church. I don't need nobody to teach me nothing. I'm just, I'm just going to go through as a good soldier. You ain't even got your armor on. You forgot about your armor. Come on. <laughs> Do you got your armor on? Because when you in battle, ah, you by shape. We just came out of a powerful women's conference, armed and dangerous. Come on, somebody. And we were reminded, hallelujah, hallelujah, that we need on. The whole entire armor. We need to put on the whole armor of God. Not one piece, not two pieces, not three pieces. All of it. All of it. Keep your armor on when you are in battle. Ah, hallelujah. Stop saying things are great when really things are not great. Come on. You about to lose your life. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's naturally and sometimes it's spiritually. Woo, you're about to be stripped of everything that God has given you. And you sitting up there talking about, I'm okay. I'm all right. God is with me. His spirit done left. God, God is with me. He done left your home. Because <laughs> you cussing, fussing, and fighting. The spirit of God done departed. And you sitting up there talking about, no, he with me. Because you play a few worship songs and you feel like the presence of God is in your house. You feel like the presence of God is in your car. You feel like he's still with you. And the truth of the matter is you, ah, you turned your back on him when you stopped trusting him. Come on. 
Tell the truth and get delivered. Come on, tell the truth. Hi, y'all by shape. Tell the truth. Come on. I teach my church. That's the only way you're going to get free. God told me that years ago. I taught, I learned that. Amen. I learned that, but I teach that. That's the only way you're going to get free is when you be real. If you hurt and say I'm hurting. If you bleed and say I'm bleeding. Come on. If somebody hurt your feelings, say my feelings are hurt. I might not get an apology, but, but my feelings are hurt. Come on, don't, I, I, say, I hear you guys. Don't harbor that. Some of you are harboring unforgiveness. Do you know unforgiveness turns into poison? Do, do you know unforgiveness, it, it becomes so toxic to your spirit, man? You try to go pray and you can't pray because it's, it's just right here. It's just right here. You're like, I hate that person. I can't stand them. I hate what they've done to me. Okay, we got it. But, but you can never, ah, help me, Holy Ghost. You can never get healed in the place that you were hurt in. Jesus, have mercy. I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I know because it happened to me years ago. And God said, daughter, you have to depart from this place. You cannot get healed in the place that you were wounded in. Huh? Makes sense now, right? <laughs> oh, that's why I got to leave? That's why I got to uproot? Hold on. Huh? Because those spirits are sometimes lodged in the walls. Oh, y'all not ready. Sometimes those spirits are in the carpet. Oh, y'all not ready. Come on, somebody. Why do you think people pull up carpets and paint the walls? And if you're going to stay there, renovate. Tear down the walls. Pull up the carpet. Because them spirits is hiding. Oh, y'all didn't know that? You didn't know that? That's why late at night you feel like something is, is on you. You fit. Maybe this is too deep for some of y'all. You waking up with scratches on your body and you know what? Nobody around you. That's the devil. That means he has access. Jesus, have mercy. Woo. Jennifer says, I'm literally in tears. Come on, it's the truth anyhow. And you sitting there talking about, oh, I'm going to be okay. God got me. <sighs> New beginnings. <laughs> she said, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's the truth. It's the truth. Ah, y'all by shape. There's a spiritual world out there. You didn't know that? Come on, you, you didn't know that. And let me, let me encourage the 12 of you that this is happening to. The kingdom of darkness is set up strategically. Did you hear me? Oh, the kingdom of darkness. Let me tell you something. They ain't playing. They're not playing because they watch you. Come on. They watch you. Oh, y'all not ready. Y'all not ready. Listen, they watch you and they study you. The devil watches you. And the devil studies you. This is why, I'm, oh, somebody go get their answer. The Lord said it's three of you. This is why the devil wants to trap you. Wants to know where you are. <laughs> Come on, somebody. It, listen, the devil want to know your thoughts. So you're thinking that that person wants to talk to you. Somebody getting an answer right here. You're thinking that that person want to make amends with you. They don't want to make amends. They just want to know what you're thinking. And you thinking they coming back in your life. Oh, Pookie said he loved me. Oh, Pookie said he, he want to start over again. No, Pookie want to know your next move so he can try to trap you. He want to know if you really about to leave him. Oh, y'all did, you did, didn't know that? You, you didn't know that's how spirits work? That person don't love you. And I oh, you about shape. Listen, because if they loved you, they wouldn't treat you the way that they treat you. Always remember, true love gives. Woo, Holy Ghost is teaching. True love gives. Ha, ah, hallelujah. How do we know true love gives? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. I can stop right there. Catch the revelation. Come on, true love gives. Hallelujah, hallelujah. True love doesn't take. True love does not take from you. And if it's taking from you, it's not love. And it's truly not the love of God. You have to be able to discern, hallelujah. Because if you stay, you're going to continue to be hurt. And you can't change nobody either. 
Somebody write that in the comments. I don't have the power to change anyone. Only God can, ah, hallelujah. I feel God moving right here. Only God can change a person. You can't change them. And most of the time, yes, Lord, I hear you. You can be a crutch to them. You're the one that's hindering the, the, their deliverance. Hallelujah. Because you still want to, mm, you're still staying in a place of being the victim. See, let me, let me, let me, let me just help some of y'all out. That's in abusive relationships. Can I help y'all? Those of you that are, in, are in, listen, it might even be abusive friendship. It doesn't have to be a marriage. Okay. You can be in an abusive friendship. Can I just teach for a minute? Can I, can I just teach for a minute? You can be in an abusive marriage and you're sitting there and you're like, or abusive. Listen, let me tell you, it could be a boss and an employee. It doesn't matter. Okay. If there's abuse, listen to this. <laughs> they see you as the victim. They're going to always listen. Let me, let me, let me help you out. Let me help you out for y'all ladies. Tell me, I can't leave him. He's so cute. He's so fine. Is he cute when he knocking you upside your head? Is he cute? Can you see his muscles when he knocking you upside your head? When he's talking down to you and calling you everything but a child of God. Huh? Can you smell the cologne then? Oh, he smells so good. He looks so good. You can't smell that cologne then, right? When he's dragging you from one room to the next. Come on. And vice versa. It's not just the men. You got some women that are abusive too. Come on. <laughs> and what happens, yes, Lord, I hear you. What happens is you stay because you're used to being rejected. This is why people go from one abusive relationship to the next. When God is saying, I want to give you something new. Yes, Lord. I want to give you something that you've never had before. Woo. I want to give you a life that you dreamed of. Say of God. But you got to be willing to shut the door to the old. So that God can give you the new. And you may say, Apostle, well, I never had it before. So how can I want something that I never had? Hey, let the Holy Spirit tonight mm, shift your mindset. Hallelujah. According to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. When you are in Christ, you are a new creature. The Bible says all things. Ooh, I feel heaven opening up right here. It says all things are passed away. And behold. That word behold means see. Hey, I feel God moving right here. And behold, hallelujah, all things will become new. Woo, speak Holy Ghost. That word become, hallelujah, is talking about futuristic. Hey, God, hallelujah. In order for something to become, you got to let it become new in your life. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah, all things become new, it becomes new, hallelujah, just because you didn't see it before, God wants to still make it new in your life, because you deserve it, you deserve it, you're not a walking mat, you're not a doormat, come on man of God, come on woman of God, you're, hey, you're not a piece of trash, you a child of the king, come on, you are a child of God. If ain't nobody never tell you, you know it tonight. You a child of God. Stop living beneath your privilege. Woo, hallelujah. Stop living beneath your Hallelujah. Stop living beneath your, your, your kingship. Hello? Your priesthood. Somebody may say a man has to be a priest. You're right. But you got some queens on here too.
Come on. God wants to bring you out tonight. He wants to give you a new beginning. But it's up to you. It's up to you now. Hallelujah. It's really up to you now. So the Bible says in Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. That's going to be our scripture reference for tonight. Amen. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you on tonight, Father God. We bless your holy name, Father. We honor you tonight, Father. With hands lifted in the air, we give you glory. We give you honor and we give your name to praise, Father God. Father, I thank you for this here, your people that have tuned in on tonight, Father. Thank you for the word that's already been spoken, oh God. Lord, we repent of our sins right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we just ask right now, Father, that you forgive us for all sin in the name of Jesus. Any sins we have, for, any sins we have committed, God, that we did not repent for, Father. We ask right now in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you will forgive us. Oh God, that you will wipe, wipe the slate clean in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh God, that you will come on in tonight. Hallelujah. Like a rush of mighty wind by your power and your anointing. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Oh God, I just ask right now, God, that you will continue to move mightily by your spirit on tonight. On this broadcast, Father. On Instagram and YouTube and Facebook Live in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus. God, that you would continue to have your way on tonight. Oh, God, continue to sweep through in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, sweep through your people's homes tonight, their apartments in the name of Jesus. And even those that are at work tonight, oh, God. Oh, God, strengthen them, Father, even to the morning time in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. And Father, we thank you for doing it now. Father God, we bless you, oh God, even as we dive into your word, God, your holy word, in the name of Jesus, Father, help your people to hear what you have to say to them on tonight. Yes, Lord, help them to hear the word and become doers of the word, Father, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Somebody needs you this morning, Father. Hallelujah. Somebody needs a breakthrough. Somebody needs a new beginning. Yes, Lord. Somebody is tired of the old, and they're ready to walk into the new. So, Father, I pray tonight in the name of Jesus this morning, oh God. Hallelujah for your people, oh God, that are ready and are hungry mm, for a change in their life, Father. Oh God, that this word will penetrate their heart, God, that it will come forth with power and conviction in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for it now. We praise you for it now. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen and amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Somebody need to tell God yes tonight. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes, I will obey. Mm. Hallelujah. Come on out of your mouth. Tell the Lord yes tonight. I know it's late. I know it's late. And some of you like, who is this woman? I don't even know who she is. Some of you, hey, Shatanda Baha. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Some of you like, how did I even get here? The Holy Spirit led you here tonight. And it's time for change. Hallelujah. Hey, how y'all? by shape. God says it's time to break out of the old. Listen, it's time for change because God wants to use you to change other people's lives, to be able to help them, Yolanda. Hallelujah. And not help them the way you've been helping them. God says, I, ah, he says, I want to put my anointing upon you tonight. I want to put my spirit inside of you tonight to where you will help those, hallelujah, that really need you now. Glory to God. It's time for ministry. It ain't time for mess. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It's not time for, for, for excuses. Come on. God is calling his people to a higher place in him and not just for blessings either. Hey, because as you obey him, he's going to bless you. Hallelujah. As you obey God, he's going to prosper you. Hey, as you put him first, hallelujah, he's going to bless your goings and your comings. Hallelujah. As you honor God, hey, hallelujah, he's going to place you in places that you thought not of. He's going to put your feet, hallelujah, in places that you never thought you would be in. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Your name, hallelujah, is going to ring in people's ears. My Lord, hallelujah as a no name because God says he's about to make your name great hallelujah to the Lamb of God God wants obedience so he can place your feet hallelujah on a strong foundation a sure foundation that is in Jesus Christ himself glory to the Lamb of God Hallelujah. Hey, Shatan Baha. Haya Bashe. Listen, I hear God saying, I'm gonna have you to break through tonight so that you can break forth. 
It's time for my people to break through. Hallelujah. Some of you can't break through in your churches because it's too much restriction. Yes, God, I hear you. He says, pull down those walls tonight. He says, pull down those walls tonight. Some of you are in places, my God, where you cannot hear God. Hey, because it's too much restriction. Too much man-made stuff. Jesus, have mercy. And God, hey, he says he sent you to this broadcast to get free tonight. Free, 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 all the way free. Not halfway free. He says all the way free. Woo, glory. I feel like running around my house. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 It's nothing like freedom. I'm praising God for you. Hallelujah. Because I done got free. Hey, I done got free from people. I done got free from opinions. Oh, y'all not ready. Hallelujah. When God is calling you to ministry, glory to God. He said, don't be afraid of their faces. Come on, Apostle Rita. Hallelujah. You got to speak with us, saith the Lord. Shake the dust off your feet and keep moving. Some of y'all scared to say stuff. What you scared for? God is not giving you the spirit of fear but a power, love, and a sound mind. Woo, hallelujah. If he called you to it, he's going to bring you through it. Come on. <laughs> Come on. That's right. You got to get free. Huh? Hallelujah. Come on. And in order to get free, some of you, God got to give you a new beginning. He got to give you a fresh start. It's time for something new. Come on. Some of you look in the mirror and you're tired of what you see. Yes, Lord, I hear you. So, some of you look at your life and you're like, it's the same thing. You wake up, this, you know, every day you wake up the same way, doing the same thing, and you're expecting something different. It's time for, it's time for the new now. <laughs> Listen, it's time for the new. Hallelujah. It's time for new beginnings. Yes, Lord, I hear you. It's time. I want you to type in the comments. It's time. It's time for new beginnings. Listen, it belongs to you. Hallelujah. You are worthy of a new start. Who am I talking to? You are worthy. Hallelujah. God says you are worthy of a new beginning. Stop thinking you're not worthy because the enemy has pounced on you. The enemy has beat you up. The enemy said it's nothing to you. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you are with people. Listen, you can't go no further. Some of you are connected to people. You can't even go no further in the realm of the spirit because they got a restriction on you. They got a lock on you. Ha! Huh? God says, get free tonight. Break free tonight. Hallelujah. So that the new beginning can come to pass in your life. Break free right here, though. You, you got to break free up here. See that? Let me move my hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me move my hair. <laughs> you, you, you got, ah, yeah, my shape. Hallelujah. You got to be free up here in your mind. Hello? Because if you ain't free up here, the body, hallelujah, is going to continue to do what it usually does. See, your mind got to be renewed according to the word of God. Come on. Your thoughts got to be renewed. Hallelujah. The book of Philippians tells us whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. God says, think on these things. He says, and if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, hallelujah, think on these things. Come on. What is your mind, hallelujah, thinking on throughout the day? If you're looking out the window and you look at cuckoo and crazy, we might have to put you in a mental hospital. I'm just saying. I'm being honest. Come on here. If your mind is not set on things above, hallelujah, hallelujah. God said, this is the time to set your mind and set your thoughts on things above. Things that the Father has created. Come on, th things that are lovely. Things that are of a good report. Hallelujah. He says, if there be any praise. Come on, Felicia McKay. Hallelujah. If there be any praise. Hallelujah. He says, think on these things. My God. My God. God is breaking through some layers tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's breaking through some layers tonight. Some of you, listen, it's okay. Hallelujah. Because God, he'll send his breakers anointed. To break off every layer in your life. You just got to give it to him. I don't know who I'm talking to. Somebody you need to let God come in. You listening to me. But you you ain't letting him come in. Come on. Let him come in tonight. Let him come in. Hallelujah. Those of you that are new to the live. Amen. I am Apostle Carmen Haywood. I see some new names tonight. You may say, who is this woman? Who is this woman that I am listening to? Hallelujah. I'm just a prophet of the Lord. That's it. I'm just God's prophet. Amen. And I'm so glad that the Holy Spirit has led you here tonight. Let's dive into the word. Hallelujah. 
I got to give God praise because some of you going to come out. Some of you going to come out. Listen, I see it. I see it. Some, ha, ah, glory to God. Some of you are ready for a new beginning. You were just like, God, I just didn't know when. I, I didn't know when you were going to do it, God. Come on. Hallelujah. A the boss says, the first time here, my first time here, I'm going through stuff that is beyond understanding. Well, stay right here. Stay right here. Holy Spirit is going to speak to you. All right. Isaiah chapter 43. Let's start reading the verse 18. Let me turn this music down. And it reads, remember ye not the former things. It says, neither consider the things of old. Verse 18, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Such a powerful, powerful, powerful verse of scripture on tonight. And you know, I love this scripture because... Before the new can begin, he goes on to say, remember ye not the former thing. And as I said in the beginning, sometimes I'm looking at YouTube. Sometimes we can stay stuck in the old because the old is familiar. You know, the old, right? If you're dealing with somebody old, you already know what they're going to say. You know, their response, you, you know, you, you just know, right? But to begin to walk into the new, it's going to take, it's going to take some time. So a lot of times people don't want to, they don't want to step into the new because they don't know what all it's going to entail. Right, woman of God, Shamika? And I shared this testimony of how I moved and relocated because it was all by faith. Amen. I, I moved because God told me to move. He didn't give me much detail either. That's another thing. We have to stop, you know, waiting for all of this detail to come. You know, God, I need you to break this down and break that down. And I need to know this. I need to know the circumference of this. And I need to know the height of that. And I need, listen, he ain't having you to build the ark. <laughs> come on. Hallelujah. Listen, God told, he told Noah, you know, the height of the ark and the width of the ark and I'm giving an example, but I'm just saying we have to stop, you know, saying, okay, God, every little detail, because the truth of the matter is if God tells you every little thing, you might get scared. Can, can I just be real tonight on Instagram? Can I be, can I be real tonight? If God was to tell you every little thing, you would be afraid because it wasn't until I got here. And I know one of the ministers is a witness to this because I said it to her. I believe we were out. It wasn't until I got here, woman of God, Shamika, that God said, I'm going to walk through North Carolina. Now, if he would have told me back in Philadelphia <laughs> that when I got here, he was going to walk through North Carolina, I might have got afraid. The spirit of fear might have gripped me. Come on. But he already had my heart. See that? He See, God already had my heart because he knew I, I moved. He knew I moved, but I moved by faith. Come on. And some of you know the rest of my testimony. I didn't sell my house first. I moved first. God said, find a house in North Carolina. He said, find a place for you and the children. I said, yes, Lord. And he actually showed me exactly where the house was. He led me to this house that I'm living in right now. Amen. And when I got here, I was able to secure it. I was able to get the house and we were able to move in. But I was like, God, what about my house in Philadelphia? He said, what about it? He said, I just wanted to get you to your destination. See that? Because see, if I was waiting to sell the house, <laughs> do you know how long that might've took? Do, ah, glory to God. Do you know the enemy could have got in that and turned away every buyer? See, God knows what he's doing. So when I got here, Sister Kashina, 30 days later, he said, put the house on the market as is. Because I was like, God, there's a few things in the house, you know, that need to be fixed. I'm talking to somebody tonight. And I was going to fix some Sister Latoya. I was like, well, you know, maybe I'll take out a loan or maybe I'll take half the money that you told me to save up, God. And I'll put it in the house so I can get some more money when I sell the house. How many of you know exactly what I wanted? The amount of money that I wanted for my house. 
is exactly what I got. Without putting the money in it, prophetess Rita, apostle Rita, without her, ah, glory to God, without having to rearrange and go back to Philadelphia to wait for a contractor to come, because I would have had to wait now. I would have had to take out time to go back home and, you know, get the house together. Come on, for those of you that's trying to do it on your own, do you know you cause more problems? You cause more problems when you get in God's way. <laughs> Listen, I'm so glad. I can share this testimony with a smile on my face. I'm so glad, Sister Latanya, I didn't get in God's way. I was thinking about it. Because I was like, wait a minute, I could get 150, I could get 200,000 if I put 40,000 in it, if I do this, and if I do that, I could get an extra 50,000. I could. Y'all know how we get to thinking. Latoya say, talk to me, Apostle. Come on here. See? Sister Katrina said, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. You see, we do that because we thinking we helping God out. But the truth of the matter is when favor rests upon your life. Woo. Can I just speak to about eight of you tonight? When the favor of God rests upon your life, hallelujah, he will give you the desired amount that you're asking him for. Hey, without you spending a dime, without you wasting your time, glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. You might want 200,000 minutes of CC. And he might say, you know what? I'm going to give you that. But the first high about the first person might have said you're only getting a hundred thousand. First person might have said you're only getting a hundred and fifty thousand. God got the final set. Hey, you might want three hundred thousand. And God said, okay, I'm gonna send a buyer. <laughs> hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm gonna send a buyer that's gonna ask you, what do you want for the house? Hey, God. my Lord. My Lord, he'll do it now. Hey, hiya bashe. Because let me tell you something. He sent the Korean man to buy my house. And y'all know Korean people got money. That man looked at me and he was like, that's what you want? I was like, uh-huh. But guess what? I had three other buyers before him. And the three other buyers was like, no, uh-uh. No, we brokers. You know, you wanted that. You want to sell it as is? Uh-uh. Because we, I, and one guy told me, I got to put this in there. I got to put a new kitchen. I got to, you know, put new steps in. I, I need a new railing on the steps. I was like, oh, okay. I said, oh, okay. Come on. But it wasn't until I moved. Hallelujah. That God sent the right buyer. See that? I had to move and do what God was telling me to do to send the blessing. Oh, that's a word for somebody right there. That's a word. But see, to the to the natural mind, it doesn't make sense. See, when, when God is in it, let me tell y'all something. I'm telling you, you're about to walk in your new beginnings because you're going to obey God now. You're getting ready to obey God and you're getting ready to see new beginnings. Hallelujah. And you're going to thank God, hallelujah, for hearing this word tonight because this word is going to save your life. That's what I hear God say. And many of you, this word is going to save your life. It's going to save you time. It's going to save you money. It's going to save you frustration. <laughs> because what God has for you is for you. Hallelujah. Maybe I need to play that song tonight. What God has for me, it is for me. Hallelujah. My voice ain't the best. What God has for me, it is for me. Mm, 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 mm. I can't hit that high note. <laughs> Hallelujah. But what God has for you, it is for you. Can nobody take that from you? Come on, somebody. And then I found out last month, this is the end of the testimony to my house. I found out last month that my house is now a church. And when I tell y'all a church, church, I'm talking about a church, literally with a sign on it and everything. That Korean man turned my house into a church. <laughs> and some of you know, if you ever came to my house, it was right on the corner. It was a nice size house too. I had a beauty salon there. Amen. So it was already a business. Come on. Hallelujah. And so now it's a church. I'm telling you. I'm telling, listen. Sister Kashina, when my mom told my daughter and my daughter told me, I hollered. I hollered. Literally. I hollered. 
I said, God, you are so amazing. Hallelujah. I said, ah, you're about shape. I said, God, you are so amazing. So amazing. And you know, it made my heart glad. For those of you that can't leave something that you love so much, let me, let me encourage you. Because I was like, Lord, I raised my children in this house. Come on. You know, my Siani, I moved when she was one. She wasn't even one. She was 11 months. And Siani is 23. Amen. My oldest daughter. So, you know, you understand? So when you have memories of something and you don't want to give it up, I do understand that. Amen. All my children, hallelujah, were raised in their house. Glory to God. I had a business for over 20 something years where I built relationships with people. Do you think I wanted to give that house up? Come on. But God took me back. Let me help five of you. God took me back because there's five of you thinking about renting your house. I hear you, Lord. L let me share this testimony. I remember when I moved to Texas, this was about eight years ago. Let me help somebody. I moved eight years ago. I know, I know I, I'm on your street. Whoever hitting them hearts on Instagram, let me help you. I didn't sell my house. I rented my house. I did what I wanted to do when God told me to move to Texas. Come on, because to be honest, I probably would have still been there. Yeah, I would have still been living in Texas. Until the Lord shifted me and relocated me to North Carolina. That's probably where I, I still would have been at. But it caused me problems. See that? God told me to pack up and go to Dallas, Texas. I packed up. I went to Dallas. But guess what? I rented my house. I didn't do what God told me to do. See that? I rented it because I wanted to keep it. And you know what I kept saying? This is going to help five of you that's thinking about it. I kept saying in my mind, I'm always going to need a place to go back to. Whew, I don't know who you are tonight, but hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> it cost me. It cost me. I rented my house out to somebody that was a complete heathen. She was actually one of the members on, on our prayer line. I ain't going to say her name. This woman did so much. And I had to uproot and leave Texas to save my house. I had to leave everything back in Texas and I lost so much. <laughs> Listen, I had fully furnished the place. It was a two bedroom town home in a private community. We were living good. You hear me? But I didn't sell the house. I didn't do what God said to do because I kept saying in my mind, oh, I know this is going to free about five of you. I kept saying in my mind, I'm always going to need a place to go back to. And I didn't sell it. I rented it. That lady gave me pure D hockey sticks. When I tell y'all, listen, she let her daughter move in. So when I when I was when I was able to get her evicted because she was on the lease, I, I had trouble because the daughter was in there and then she had young kids in there. Listen, I was ready to lose my salvation. I'm being honest. I'm sharing this testimony to help somebody. I was like, Lord, I know I'm saved. I know I'm a pastor, but I'm about to fight. It was just that bad. I, I got to be real. I got to be real because when you're not in the will of God, you in your flesh. You in your flesh. I called my brother. I got one brother. Called my brother. I said, Larry. I said, listen. I said, I'm on my way back. I said, I'm on my way back to Philly. I said, I got to save my house. I said, God, he told me to pack up and move back. He was like, sis, you really coming back? I said, I'm coming back. I said, but I ain't coming back being nice. I said, I, I already know you ain't got nothing to lose. I ain't got nothing to lose either. I told my brother, I said, when I get there, it's on and popping. That's exactly what I said. That's exactly what I said. Because I was so upset. But guess what? I didn't follow God's plan. So it wasn't God's fault. It was my fault. I didn't get my house back till three months later. When I got my house back, the spirit of God had departed. So I had to pray. This is the same house I'm talking about. I had to pray and ask God to come back into this house. It was like a hollow shell. I had to pay the girl money to get my keys back. Couldn't evict them. It, it was a mess. When I tell y'all, it, it was a pure D mess. I had to stay with my mom for about, yeah, three months, two and a half months, almost three months. Yeah. It wasn't good at all. <laughs> Listen, that's my testimony. But it was all because I didn't follow God. 
So for the five of you that's thinking about selling or, I mean, you, you God told you to sell, but you're thinking about renting because you like, I, I just need cushion. I need, I need, I need security. <laughs> when God tell you to do something, you don't need, you don't need security. You, you don't need it because he's supposed to be your security. You're supposed to trust in him. Come on. And when we trust in things, we trust in money, we trust in other people. And that's exactly what I did. It cost me a lot. It cost me sleep. I would ride by the house and I'm like, okay, how am I going to turn this electric off? Who want me to get to turn the water off? And God said, you're not going to do any of that. When I found out it was little kids in there, it was no way I could do that. It was no way that I could do that. Even though I was being mistreated, come on, it was my house. And I had every right to come back to my house. But God said, not so. He said, you're going to learn. And I learned the lesson. And God allowed me to transition. He allowed me to relocate. Amen. And I did it his way this time. And because I did it the way that God told me to do it, not only did he bless me, he restored me. Hallelujah. God restored me. And so I just want to speak over somebody's life tonight. God bless you, Sister Roberta. And I just want to tell you, forget the old. Forget the former. Forget the old way of thinking. Just let it go. Hallelujah. The Bible says, listen, forget, forgetting the former, forgetting the old, right? It says, remember ye not. So in other words, don't even remember it anymore. It's old. And you have to see it as such. He says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider. So don't even think about it. Because the more you think about the old, it's going to stay right in your heart. You know, it's going to stay right in your spirit and you're not going to be able to move forward. Amen. So he says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. He says, behold. And that word behold means see to kill her. He says, see, I will do a new thing in you. Mm. He says, now it shall spring forth. But then he asks a question. He says, shall you not know it? I love that part, Sister Latoya. He says, shall you not know it that I'm about to do a new thing in your life? Hallelujah. Shall you not know it that I'm about to spring up something awesome that I had promised you a long time ago? Hallelujah. He says, shall you not know it? You got to know it now, Jacqueline. You have to know it without a shadow of a doubt. That's why that question is there. It says, shall ye not know it? Somebody shout, I know it. I know. I know God made me a promise. I know God made me a promise. Hallelujah. I know what the father has spoken. Come on, prophetess Chanel. And he has confirmed it over and over and over again. I'm talking to about 12 of you tonight. Hallelujah. He says, shall you not know it? The promise that I made to you. That I told you I was going to do something new. Hallelujah. That I told you I was going to renew your mind, renew your body, and renew your spirit. And bring you to a place of peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because see, when you get in the will of God, you're going to, be, you're going to have so much peace. Mm. Hallelujah. And see, his peace surpasses all understanding. The Bible says, as we keep our mind and our heart stayed on him. Let me just encourage those of you that God is getting ready to shift. Some of you, it's a natural place and some of you, it's a spiritual place. Come on. And if God is shifting you, hallelujah, to a spiritual place in him, you got to go now. You got to go now. It's time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time now. It's time for you to shift. Hallelujah. It's time for your prayer life to be increased. It's time, hallelujah, for your faith to come up higher in God. Yes, he said, have a little, little bit of faith. Mustard seed faith to move the mountain but you're going to need higher by shape. You're going to need faith in God now. Hallelujah. You're going to have to step out on faith now. And some of you, the Lord says, you got to take a leap of faith. Glory to God. You, you're going to have to take a leap of faith. He says, but I'll be with you. Hallelujah. Even until the ends of the earth. He says, as you take this leap of faith, I'm not going to leave you. Hallelujah. I'm going to be right there with you. Glory to God. As you're taking this leap of faith, as you're jumping, hallelujah, into the promise, as you're jumping into the, ah, oh, yes, Lord, into purpose and destiny, as you are jumping, he says, I'm going to be right there with you. Hey, he says, because he's the one that's telling you now you got to walk by faith and not by sight. Mm, glory to God. And if we pay attention to what we see, 
Hallelujah. We gonna miss the mark. But somebody shout tonight, I'm ready for my new beginning. I ain't missing the mark this time. Hallelujah. I'm gonna do exactly what God say to do. My ministry is gonna birth out. Hallelujah. My family is gonna be healed. Come on, somebody. See, this act of faith. Yes, God, I hear you. He says, this act of faith. He said, tell my people, as I'm birthing the new beginning, they got to exercise their faith now. Hallelujah. And as they exercise their faith, this leap of faith, hallelujah, is going to bless your entire family. It's going to bless your entire family. You got children, it's going to bless your children. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Whatever the promise is. Hey, God says, I'm ready to perform it. Woo. Mm. He said, what I have promised you, I'm ready now. Hey. Yes, God. He said, what I have promised you, glory to God, the new building, the new ministry, the new start. Yes, Lord, I hear you. He says, even new health. Woo, God. He says, I'm getting ready to give my people new health. Hallelujah. If you had, uh, if you had sickness in your body, God said, just believe by faith tonight for a new beginning that he's going to give you good health. Hallelujah. That he's going to heal your lungs. He's going to heal your heart. My God. He's going to heal that sugar diabetes. Hallelujah. He's going to heal that arthritis. Hallelujah. He's going to heal you and give you new health. Mm. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. He said new breakthroughs for my children. I'm getting ready to give you the new. Hallelujah. With new breakthroughs. Hallelujah. So that you can break forth now. He says, and in the breakthrough, I wrote it down. He said, it's new connections. Glory to God. He says, as you break through and as you break forth, my God, he says, I'm going to give you new connections. New connections, new connections, new connections, new connections. Some of you wanted to connect with people, but it wasn't the right time. Hallelujah. Come on, Evangelist Stephanie. She says, oh, I can testify now. Hallelujah. That my heart is right and I can connect with new people now. Hallelujah. Because God has healed me. Hey, glory to God. See, sometimes God got to heal you. Hallelujah. From people hurting you. Who am I talking to? And we don't say church hurt over here. Hallelujah. We just say people hurt. Listen, people have hurt you, but the church ain't hurt you. My God. It was an evil spirit that has come to hurt you. And how many of you know, glory to God, that God is going to heal you. Oh God, from everywhere you hurt, whether it was a leader, whether, oh God, mm. Hallelujah. Whoever has hurt you, whether it was in the church, outside of the church, God says this new beginning, I'm about to birth in your life. He said, don't worry about the hurt that you have experienced. He said, because I'm getting ready to put you around people that truly love me, save God, and that truly love the work, my Lord. Hallelujah. And you're going to be able to work. Hallelujah. And do the ministry that God has called you to now. And this is the new beginning that the father has wanted many of his children to get to. He said, now prophesy. So I prophesy in the name of Jesus, uh, your new beginning. I prophesy in the name of Jesus, your new start. I prophesy new healing to take place over your body. I prophesy that you be delivered in this new season of your life. Uh, I prophesy, hallelujah, a new job, a new career. I prophesy a new business as God is birthing out new beginnings for you. I prophesy a new mindset. Remain Called about shape. I prophesy new fire to fall upon you now. I prophesy in the name of Jesus a new anointed to fall upon the obedient servants. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy that your ministry will not die, but it will live in Jesus' name. I prophesy that those of you that God is calling to the nations, oh, that God will continue to prepare the way as He prepares you. Oh my God, for your feet to touch the land. Um, I prophesy in the name of Jesus that as you forget the old uh, that new doors will begin to spring open. I prophesy in the name of Jesus um, that God will birth out new relationships. Uh, that God will give you new love. Yes Lord. Um, for those that are ready in the name of Jesus. I prophesy tonight. Hey! Your new beginning. Close the door to the old, huh? And God is going to open the new. I speak over each and every person now in Jesus' mighty name that the Father will perform it, that he will perform it suddenly in Jesus' mighty name. And it is so, and it is so, and it is so in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. 
To God be the glory. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Yes, Lord. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. That's a good place to praise him. To God be the glory. Come on. That's a good place. To God be the glory. Come on. God is about to perform it. And what the enemy said you would not be able to do, daughter Yolanda, you are getting ready to do it. Hallelujah. What the enemy tried to stop you with. Oh, hallelujah. God is turning it around for your good. The Bible says what the enemy has sent for evil. Evil. Sister Latoya, God's going to turn it around for your good. It's going to work in your favor. Hallelujah. For the enemy has sent many ambushments that God is showing me for many of you. But God says it's going to turn and work in your favor now. Because it didn't kill you. Hallelujah. God used it to get you to your knees. Hallelujah. Sometimes God got to let the enemy talk about you. Come on, Job. Hallelujah. It wasn't until 42 chapters later, amen, that God restored Job. Come on, somebody. It wasn't until, hallelujah, it was not until 42 chapters later, Minister CC. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That Job, he went through, he, through sickness. Come on. Hallelujah. He had boils all over his body. And then his friends, hallelujah, begin to talk about him, saying, Job, we know you did something. And Job didn't do nothing. Hey, hallelujah. Even his wife said, why don't you curse God and die? And he told his wife, he said, Oh, foolish woman, you must be crazy. You think I'm a curse to God that has blessed me with everything? You got to be kidding me. Hallelujah. He said, woman, you, you are so foolish right now. I will not curse God and die. And then Job began to say, though he slay me. Hey, come on. Some of you are right there. You coming out tonight. Though he slay me yet. Will I trust him? Hey, come on, type yet in the comments. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, I want you to type yet. Yet, 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 will I trust him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He allows some things to happen in my life. Glory to God, but yet will I trust him? Though he slay me, it's all right. I had to go through some things and be persecuted and be lied on. Hallelujah, but I outlived the lie. Come on, somebody. In the name of Jesus, though he slay me, yet will I trust him? Yet will I still trust him, Sister Katrina. Hallelujah. Even though some things took place that I'm really not too happy about. Hallelujah. Come on, Sister Katrina. That's your testimony. Yeah, they did me wrong. Hallelujah. And they tried to sabotage my name. But I still was a woman of integrity. Though he slayed me, yet will I trust him. Even though God allowed my enemies, hallelujah, to come up against me. My God, they couldn't devour me. In the name of Jesus, God allowed your enemies to to Chanel to get close to you, but they cannot touch you. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Evangelist Arlene, God allowed the witches to be able to ear hustle, hallelujah, and hear what God was doing in your life. And God allowed the witches to be able to see the manifestation of God as they begin to come against it. But I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, you outlive the witch. Oh my God. And he said he suffered a witch not to live in the name of Jesus. That's why mm -hmm, you're you're having spiritual dreams about the witches that came against your progress. Oh my God, because God says, I'm getting ready to cut them down. He said, that's why I'm giving you prophetic dreams to let you know that I heard the witch. And God says, I heard their plan, but it will not work. Hallelujah. It will not work. Somebody shot it won't work because I'm about to step in to my new beginning. Mm. Glory to God. Somebody shout, I'm about to step in to my new beginning, my new place of promise. I'm about to step into it. Hallelujah. I hear new credit. Oh my God. Some of you, God is about to give you new credit. He's about to wipe the slate clean. So don't be surprised you get an email. Don't get surprised somebody tell you, oh, you ain't got bad credit no more. Come on, Sister Latoya. Did not God wipe your credit clean? And did not God wipe your history clean? In the name of Jesus, don't tell me me that God won't do it. Hallelujah. When you trust him, when you obey him, I feel God moving. When you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. He said, in all your ways, acknowledge me. That means esteem me. God says, lift me up. Hallelujah. Over your situation and I will direct your path. Woo. 
Ooh, I feel God moving right here. Get your breakthrough. Come on, get your breakthrough. Come on, get your breakthrough. Walk in your new beginnings. Come on, walk around your bedroom and say, it's my time. Hey, come on, walk around your bedroom and say, it's my time. I deserve a new beginning. Hey, I deserve a new start. Come on, somebody. It's my time. I done been through hell and high water and I ain't cuss either because some of you know hell is a real place. Somebody shout, it's my time. It's my time. I suffer for this. I labored for this. It's my time. Hey, hallelujah. Somebody shout, it's my time. Hey, hallelujah. The Bible says weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. It's my time. Some of you done cried yourself to sleep. It's your time. Hallelujah. People watched you cry and they ain't want to even give you a napkin, but it's your time to kill her. They watched you cry. They watched you suffer. They watched you go through her. But I hear the spirit of the Lord saying to tell you to kill her. It's all right. They didn't hand you a napkin to wipe your face because God said, I allowed you to cry. Hey, I allowed you to go through your season of suffering for the bible says hallelujah i feel god moving right here the bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord shall deliver us out of them all Whew. many mm. somebody put many in the comments those of you that's been going through many are the afflictions hey you got to go through something to get through to get to Come on, you got to go through to get to. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. How you think God anoints you? Hey, hallelujah. How you think the oil, glory to God, is going to flow from the crown of your head down to the sole of your feet? Uh, you got to be crushed. Mm. Hallelujah. Your time of crushing is over. You were crushed so that the oil can now come out. Hey, hallelujah. Hey, somebody give God praise. I feel a praise. Hallelujah. You've been crushed. God allowed you to be crushed. But see, you got to be crushed so that the oil can come out. Hey, hallelujah. So that you can really know him. Come on, somebody. You got to be crushed. Woo. Hmm. My Lord, hallelujah. See the olive. Hey, Shatanda Baha. And listen, the olive looks real pretty just sitting there. But see, the olive got to be crushed for that oil to come out. Woo. It got to be pressed. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Not one time. Woo. Come on, Sister Kashina. Not one time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, come on, Minister Cece. Not one time. But that olive got to be crushed over and over and over. Because God said, I'm going to get all the oil out of you now. Hey, for where I'm getting ready to take you. He said, I got to get all the oil out of you now. Come on. Somebody bless him. Somebody bless him. Come on. Somebody bless Jesus. He got to get all the oil out of you now, tequila. That's why he let you suffer. That's why he let you go through. Oh my God. But you're going to have a powerful testimony, woman of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You're going to have a powerful testimony of how you learn how to pray. God wants me to tell you, tequila, that you learn how to pray. Hallelujah. When nobody else was around. Hey, see, that's a real prayer life. Come on, somebody. When, when nobody else was around, you learn how to pray to kill her. Come on, you learn how to talk to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's, that's the best place right there. Come on, somebody. When ain't nobody else around, you ain't got the fancy words. Come on here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because sometimes when we in front of people, we got the fancy words. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I just ask that you do this and I ask that you do that, God. And I ask that you move on behalf of sister so-and-so, God, and brother so-and-so, God, and bless my pastor, Lord, and heal my pastor, God, and do a work, God. Touch the saints, God. See, when we in front of people, we got the fancy words. Hey! Hallelujah. But when you in the presence of God, come on, Sister Tia, you like, God, you know. God, you know. God, you know. God, you know. I need you to strengthen me God God you know with tears running down your face huh? you like God I need you to purge me God I need you to cleanse me come on that's real prayer right there God I need you to do it for me God and Lord if you don't do it huh, you're still good high of my ship God you've been so good to me see that's real prayer right there come on Hallelujah. Tears running down your face, Sister Tracy. Come on, somebody. And you like, God, God, I need you to rescue me, God. I feel like I'm sinking, God. Hey, can we pray like that at the church? Can we pray like that at the altar? Come on, somebody. Can we be real like that so that God can begin to move? Ooh, weeping may endure for a night. Mm. 
I hear God tonight. Some of you been crying just like that. Stacy said, that's me. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. You've been crying. You've been crying out to God with hands lifted in the air. You say, Lord, I don't even have nothing. Hey, God, I don't even have nothing. All I got is my tears. I ain't even got nothing. Hallelujah. Everybody done took from me. That's somebody's prayer. Everybody done took from me. I ain't got nothing no more. I ain't, I ain't even got myself. I done lost myself. Who am I talking to? That's your prayer now. And you like, I ain't got nothing. Oh, but all I got is my tears, Jesus. Um, and if I could just, oh, God, uh, if I could just let my tears hit your feet, God. Uh, oh, God, I know, hallelujah, that you will restore me, that you will heal me, that you will bring me back to a place of restoration. Who am I talking to? Um, and God says, I want your tears tonight. Um, he says, it's okay. Give me these tears because this is the last time you're going to cry. Woo. He said, this is the last time you're going to cry. He said, this is the last time. Oh, yeah, he said, this is the last time you're going to cry. He said, give me your tears tonight. It's all right. He said, be real in my presence. It's all right. He says, give it to me tonight. It's all right. He said, I need oh, yeah, I need you to pour it all out now so that I can fill you up again. He said, I need you to pour it all out now so that I can fill you up again. He said, I need you to pour it out. I need you to pour out the tears. And as you, oh God, he says, as you're pouring out the tears, he says, I'm going to heal you now. This is your new beginning of healing. This is your new beginning of restoration. He says, and not only am I going to heal you, I'm going to restore you. Oh my God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He says, I'm going to restore you. I'm going to restore your mind. I'm going to restore your body. Because see, the truth of the matter is when you are being afflicted, your body don't feel right. Hallelujah. And pain is an indication that something ain't right. Woo. Help me, Holy Ghost, tonight. Some of you, your body's been racked with pain. Yeah. And you go to the doctor and the doctor like, ain't nothing wrong with you. We ain't find nothing. Hey, hallelujah. That's what stress would do. Oh, but God is coming for that stress tonight. He says, as you, ah, I feel a breaking right here. He's, ah, yes, Lord. I feel a breaking right here. He says, as you cry out to me, I'm going to heal you. He says, as you cry out to me, I'm going to restore you. He said, just cry out, cry out, cry out, cry out, cry out. This is your new beginning. You haven't even been able to cry. Come on. This is your new beginning because people been around you and the people that's been around you some of you couldn't even cry in front of them some of you didn't even want to cry in front of your kids well now is the time for you to cry release those tears release it in the name of Jesus it's all right and I want you to put in the comments it's all right it's all right. Hey, I'm coming naked and unashamed tonight. I'm not ashamed anymore of the persecution. I'm not ashamed anymore of the abuse. Come on, get free, get free. I'm not ashamed anymore that I gave the wrong people my money. Come on, that's somebody's prayer tonight. I'm not ashamed anymore that I made the wrong decisions. Come on and get free tonight. I'm not ashamed anymore. Hi, am I shame. Come on, you got to say I'm not ashamed anymore. Come on. Because that shame will hold you back. Be loose from the spirit of shame. Come on, be loose from the spirit of shame. You made some mistakes. God is forgiving you. Come on, be loose tonight. Be loose tonight. You messed up. Huh? God said, just give me your tears tonight. That's it. I'm going to give you a new start. I'm going to give you a clean slate. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you a new mindset. Yes, God. Mm. Come on, come on. He says, I'm renewing your heart. I'm renewing your heart. I'm giving you a new heart. A heart that's going to beat again. Ha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. He's touching the heart. He's touching some of you. He's touching your heart right now. Yeah. You might even feel a warm sensation over your heart. Come on. You, you might even feel it tonight. Hallelujah. Come on. Let him heal your heart tonight. Let him heal your heart. Come on. Let God come in. Let him come in. Let him come all the way in. Come on. Let him come all the way in. If you have to put the phone down, you got to put your tablet down, whatever you watching, whatever device you got, listen, put it down and give God praise. Come on. Cry out. Cry out. Cry out. Come on. Get what you need from God. Just keep the speaker on so that you can hear me. That's it. That's it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Cry out. Cry out. Cry out. Come on. Give it to God. Give it to him. This is the last time you're going to cry over this. God said, this is the last time. He said, this is the last time you're going to cry over this because new beginnings have to birth forth. The Lord is showing me some of you, your hands were like this. 
you were shackled up, but you shackled yourself. Mm. My Lord, my Lord, sometimes we can bind ourselves, even with the words of people. Come on, I hear God tonight. He said, some of you were shackled just like this. You were shackled up. You were shackled up like, like you couldn't move. You were, ah, shake. Oh, hallelujah. God just broke that. Mm. I felt that in the realm of the spirit. Jesus, have mercy. You are no longer bound. Hey, God. Mm. Somebody, you felt that. You felt that tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 The shackles are broken off of your hands and off of your feet. Ah, glory to God. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Some of you, yes, Lord. He says you were thinking about going backwards. You were thinking about going backwards. You were thinking about going back to what's familiar. God says, now you've been free. Now you've been set free. Hallelujah. So you're not going to go back. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody bless him. Hallelujah. God is moving mightily by his spirit. Amen. He's moving mightily by his spirit. Amen. What is it? Master, um, Master Alexandria. Give me your first name. Amen. Master Alexandria. I know you join the live sometimes. Amen. Give me your first name so I know who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. See, one thing about God, people of God, he moves mightily by his spirit. Amen. And this is why God is able to set you free through social media. Amen. We had a prayer line for 13 years. And let me tell you something. People got delivered on the prayer line. Never saw them. Just heard their voice. That's it. That's it. They heard my voice and I heard their voice. Amen. God sets his people free, sets his people free by his anointed. Hallelujah. This is why many people don't understand it. They don't understand a the prophetic. They don't understand prophetic prayer. Okay, master is your first name. Got it. All right. Amen. They don't understand prophetic prayer. They don't understand prophetic ministry. But it's his anointing that is flowing because God is what? A spirit. Right? The Bible says they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God sets his captive free. He's, I'm not his captive, the captive. God has come to set the captive free. Right, Yolanda? So what he does is he sends forth his anointing. Hallelujah. That is working through his vessel. Hallelujah. That is able, that is able to set those who are bound free. Come on here. This is how God is able to set you free. Hallelujah. And the Bible says whom the son sets free is free indeed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't know who all, who all got free tonight, but I bless King Jesus. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you got free tonight, give him praise. Come on. If you're getting free, ah, hallelujah. Don't stop. Amen. If you're getting free, if you're crying, stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there with God. Amen. With your hands lifted, stay right there. Stay right there. Don't, don't break it. Amen. Don't, don't, don't quench the spirit. All right. Hallelujah. Continue to let the spirit of the Lord move upon you on tonight. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, Father God, I just thank you for the moving of your spirit, oh God. Those that you have touched tonight, those of you that, that you have ministered to, Father, I say thank you this morning, oh God. Thank you for this here, your people, oh God. These are your people, Father. And Lord, I just give you praise, honor, and glory for trusting me, God, with the word that you have given me, oh God, to speak over their lives. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That new beginnings will come. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. That new beginnings will birth out for your people and they will be restored. That they will be healed, delivered, and set free so that they can step and walk into their new beginnings after today. Father, for this, I give you glory. Father, for this, I give you praise. Father God, I give you all the honor on tonight. Thank you, Father, for moving mightily by your spirit. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Some of you, amen, God is showing me in the spirit that you are still, you're still caught up. Amen. So it's okay. It's okay that you're still caught up. Let God continue to do the work. Amen. Don't, don't come out of it, but let him continue to do the work. Um, there are many of you, um, the Lord is telling me that you're going to, uh, walk in your new beginnings and people are going to see, um, the new you. They're going to see the new creature. They're going to see the new mindset. Um, the Lord is telling me that, that many of you are going to start talking Yes, Lord, I hear you. And even your speech is going to be different. It's not going to be fake. You're going, you're going to be real now. Glory to God. You're, you're going to be real now. You're going to even, thank you, Holy Spirit, learn how to express yourself. Because when you are bound up, you can't express yourself. You don't even know how to express yourself. 
You know, there's a saying, you fake it till you make it, right? But God is saying, as he has set you free today and you're walking in your new beginnings, you're going to be able to express yourself. You're going to be able to express yourself. If you're upset, you're going to be able to say, I'm upset. If you're happy, you're going to be able to say, I'm happy. <laughs> Come on. You're going to, ah, hallelujah. I felt that break right there. You're going to be able to express yourself now. Because at one time you were so bound up. Yeah. But God has set you free. Hallelujah. So I say to you tonight, stay free. Amen. Stay free. Now, listen, those of you that want to sow, amen, there's no obligation. But I know there's some sowers that are on tonight because you understand, you know, you understand that when God blesses you, you want to seal what he has spoken over your life. Amen. So those of you that want to sow into this word, listen, sow into the anointing, sow into this ministry. Uh, we do have a building fund. Um, I'm not going to say everything, but I will say this. We are looking at a new building here in North Carolina. Let's give God praise. <laughs> Amen. We are looking at a new building. So I want to say, people of God, that we do have a building fund. Um, those of you that want to sow into it, I'm telling you, God is getting ready to do something amazing. I can't give full detail, but I can tell you this, that we are looking at a new building. So with that being said, I'm going to ask those of you that, you know, if you want to sow into our building fund, you can name your seed building fund. Um, if you want to sow just into the ministry tonight in regard to the word tonight, you can sow into the word and name that seed new beginning. Now you might say, apostle, I want to sow into both. I want to sow into the word. I want to sow into the anointing. And I also want to sow into the building fund because I love this ministry. And I really want to see what God is getting ready to do. Amen. So those of you that want to partner with us um, in our building fund for our new building, I'm believing God within six months. That, that's all I'm going to say. Within six months, I, I'm believing God. Now, within six months, he could do it in three months, Sister Kashina. I see you hitting those hearts. He could do it in two months. He can do it in a month. Amen. God can do anything but fail. There's no failure in our God. Hallelujah. So I just wanted to say that. Amen. Those of you that want to sow. Amen. I see y'all sowing. God bless you, Sister Tracy. Amen. I'm going to pray over every seed in the next two minutes. I'll give you all about two minutes to sow. Amen. But we have found a building. Sister Latoya, I'm telling listen, I feel like shouting. I really do. Uh, we just got to finish some stuff. All right. Amen. But, um, to God be the glory. Amen. And I thank God. Yes, yes. God is so good, Rashida. I am just so grateful. You know, it's been prophesied. Amen. But I had to remain obedient. You know, it, it's been prophesied. And so even though, you know, God prophesies to his apostles and his prophets, right? We still have to remain obedient. Amen. I still have to remain obedient in my giving. Um, I still have to remain obedient in our ministry. You know, I can't stop Sister Shamika. You know, I, I can't. Amen. I have to still, excuse me. I had to still remain obedient. You know, um, everything that God was telling me to do. Amen. Um, it hasn't always been easy. You know, um, there were times that, you know, I was like, Lord, I'm ready to shut the doors of the church because we ain't got no finances. You know, the people not giving and God said, keep the doors open. He said, I'm testing your faithfulness. I'm testing you. Amen. So I'm so glad, you know, that we passed the test. Um, I'm just grateful. You know, I'm grateful because every step of the way, and I don't know who I'm talking to, but when it comes to ministry um, and it comes to God's people, amen, amen. I, I got your message. I'm not going to say your name. I see your message. Okay, I see your message. That's fine. That's fine. Amen. Um, you still got to remain obedient. Amen. Even with the powerful anointing, it, it, it really doesn't matter. You know, I'm, I'm going to leave this. I'm going to leave this with you all. Those of you that are sowing, I'm going to uh, pray over every seed in just a minute. want to give you all time to sow. Just let the Lord minister to you. It might be a seed for the word tonight, the anointing and, you know, a seed into our building fund. But let God speak to you. Amen. It may be a hundred dollar seed. You know, we're going to need as much finances as we can get uh, for our down payment um, on our new building. Um but it's all God. That's all I can say. It's, it's all God. And so what I wanted to leave you with is this. Um, just because you're anointed, that's not that's not a ticket into heaven. Um, and just because you're anointed and gifted, um, that doesn't mean you don't have to be obedient. Amen. Um, and I'm going to say amen if ain't nobody else going to say amen. Because just because you have a ministry or you're a pastor or you're a leader in the body of Christ, 
um, the word still applies. Amen. The word still applies. And one thing I've learned over the many, many years being in ministry, um, for my personal life, I still have to give. I still have to pay my tithe and get my offering for my businesses. You know, I have multiple businesses. God is great. God is great. I, I still have to be a giver. Amen. I, I cannot. First of all, I can't say I love God and I don't honor his word because then that means I'm a hypocrite. Right. Even as a pastor, you know, even as an apostle, even as a prophet of the Lord, I still have to obey him. Amen. So I just wanted to say that to those of you that are called to ministry, your personal life has nothing to do with what he has called you to do. What does that mean? It all has to line up equally because I can't tell you all to do something that I don't do. But the fact that I do it, Apostle Rita, and God is, 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 you know, he, he has given the okay with that. And I'm doing what he's telling me to do in my personal life. That's why the ministry is blessed. This is why he opened doors and continues to open doors for those who are connected with the ministry. You see, that's why the favor of God rests upon the ministry. And I know when we go for this building that God is going to give us favor. I already know it. I already know it. So if you can't sow into the building fund tonight, just pray for us. Amen. If, if you can't sow into PIPW ministry, just pray. You know, to just pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just, just continue to pray for us. Amen. That PIPW ministry will be all that God is calling for it to be in these last and evil days. Amen. We thank you all uh, for your time. Amen. We thank you all for your prayers, your support. I'm going to pray over uh, seeds that have been sown on tonight. Has it been many? Amen. I saw three people sow tonight, but that's okay. Amen. That's all right. That's all right. Amen. Um, those of you that can plant your seed tonight. Amen. There's another seed that just came through. Um, thank you. Um, but that's four of you that sowed tonight. Amen. I can see four seeds came through. And, and I'm saying that because um, there's 38 people that are on the live. There's 38 people on the live. I'm not the type of pastor that begs. I'm not going to beg you. God God is not going to beg you. I'm not going to beg you. Um, it's either you, you're you going to do it or not. You know, it's either you love God, you know, enough to sow, you know, into his work. Um, and even seal, you know, because your seed is going to seal what God has spoken over your life tonight. If you don't believe me, read the book of Matthew. All right. Read the book of Matthew where Jesus talked about it. Amen. Uh, Master said, this is very good soil. Amen. Thank you for that confirmation for those who might be thinking about sowing. Amen. Um, read the book of Matthew. It talks about when Jesus sowed the word, when he sowed the seed. It talks about it when he sowed it into the disciples and how the enemy, his job is to come and to pluck up that seed. So just because you heard the word, it doesn't mean that it's sealed. See that? Your seed, it seals the word. And the enemy cannot, he can't do nothing. He, he can't pluck it up. It's nothing he can do. Amen. Once you have sealed the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, you know, Jesus told the disciples, he said, listen. He said, my word that has been spoken over you, the enemy wants to come and pluck it up. So this is why every time that we receive the word of God, we seal it. We seal it. Amen. We seal it. We seal it. Hallelujah. And many of you have total victory because you have sealed the word that was spoken over your life. Some of you, that's your testimony. Mm -hmm. Some of you, that's your testimony. Don't let the devil rob you. Come on. We had an awesome time tonight. Don't let the devil rob you. Don't, don't let, listen, listen, if that word was for you tonight, don't, don't let the enemy rob you. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. walk in your new beginnings and walk with your head held high thanking God for your new beginnings come on hallelujah that's right sister Tia thank you for your seed tonight as well listen walk with your head held high looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith hallelujah hallelujah the psalmist said I will look unto the hill from with cometh my help 
knowing that my help coming from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This new season of beginnings, people of God, keep your head held high, looking unto Jesus and thanking him always. Hallelujah. I feel like crying tonight. I really do. And the reason why I feel like crying, saints, is because many of you needed this. Many of you needed this. And you thought it was over. You thought it was over. Mm. I ain't going to cry, though, because if I start crying, y'all going to start crying. But, but I love God so much. I love him because that's the last thing I'm going to say. He's so mindful of us. You know? Hmm. I got to exit because I'm really about to cry. Listen, if we only knew how much he loves us, just when some of you were ready to give up and throw in the towel, God said, no, I'm going to throw it back to you because you got work to do can't give up now <laughs> and some of you are too far you so far out in the deep if you try to go back to the shore you so far out there now God has done so much in your life and some of you are so blessed the Lord wants me to tell you this morning you are so blessed you're blessed with good health you may not have all the money that you want but you got some money. Come on, you got a seed to sow tonight. You know, God says he gives seed unto the sower. He gives bread to those who are hungry. He gives water to those who are thirsty. You are so blessed. So blessed. So blessed. Even though the enemy was fighting you, you got victory tonight. Hallelujah. 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 You got victory tonight. Amen. You got victory tonight. So with that being said, I love you all. God bless you all. Thank you all for your seeds. I see you all sowing. Amen. Get your best seed in the ground tonight. Let God speak to you. Amen. Let the Lord minister to you. And if he speak to you again, get your seed in the ground. Amen. I just want to pray over every seed. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, I come before you once again this morning. Father, just saying thank you for this here, your people, oh God. Thank you for the spirit of obedience, Lord God, that your people have walked in tonight and sowing. Um, their seeds on tonight, whether it was into the word, Father, or whether it was into our building fund, we just say thank you tonight. Father, we thank you for all that has been said and done. And Lord, we just seal every seed in the blood of Jesus right now. I seal even now, God. Hallelujah. Every seed in the blood of Jesus. I thank you right now, Father, that you're going to give some 30, some 60, some 100 fold back to your people in the name of Jesus. But most of all, Father, we say thank you for the new beginnings. Most of all, Father, I thank you for those that thought it was all over. But God, you have given them a new start and a new beginning and a new mindset tonight. You have freed them from the devices of the enemy. You have set the captive free once again, Father God. So for this, I say thank you. And Lord, I praise your name, God. I thank you that your people will never be the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They will never be the same. Glory to your name, God. They will never be the same. For they will have powerful testimonies. And Father God, for this I give you glory. For this I give you praise and I give you all the honor. And it's in Jesus' mighty name I do pray. Amen and amen. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Listen, I'm going to try not to cry, <laughs> but I love you all in Jesus' name. I really do. Share your testimonies, all right? When the new beginnings start birthing forth, I want you to share, all right? When the new beginnings come, I want you to inbox me. Apostle, God is doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it. I'm going to be praising God with you all. Amen. Have a wonderful night. God bless you. In Jesus' name.